talk to coach. So how have the last uh, couple of days been since we've talked practice? Anything anything really changed? What have you seen growth on the team? Um, actually, we're kind of in a, in a little bit of a lull. So yesterday we, we did. We had to sit back and, and have another talk yesterday about motivation and finishing strong. I think, you know, the realization is setting in, and I, th I, I really think it's harder to motivate someone or keep someone engaged um, when they can see the, the end um, and it's not the ending that they want um, when there's one week left uh, as opposed to eight weeks left when there's still so much, you know, to fight for. Um, so the last couple of weeks has been, you know, a lot of the – or not – sorry, the last couple of days has been a lot of the coaching staff like – you know, finish strong, you can do this. You know, a lot more of that kind of external motivation. Um, so we'll have a short practice today. I've got a fun video for them today that has nothing to do with basketball. And uh, But like I said, I'm actually glad to be back on the road because I just think we're more engaged when we're on the road. And have you seen that? Was it in their practice you saw that? Or was it like talking to them you saw that they needed that extra move? Where did that come across Both you? in the practice. The practice is a little flat. And uh, and then even, you know, when we were meeting in the film room, you can kind of see like a little bit of a glazed look um, that I hadn't seen in a while. Um, so the cool thing is I had a great conversation last night with Brittany Brewer. And, um, you know, so th these underclassmen and how we finish is so important to me for the underclassmen. Like it's important for me for the seniors, but at this point, you know, intrinsically you've got to be you're a senior and you know that I've only got one or two games left so there's not a whole lot I can do for you at this point um that's why I appreciate Jada Terry so much because she really she's really gotten it and I feel like she can honestly say that she hasn't wasted in a day of her senior year um but but my my biggest um uh pull right now are those underclassmen it's extremely important to me that they finish strong um, and that they feel good about what they've done as freshmen or sophomores and that they're ready to take the next step. And do you get that sense that – does the team take that same mindset about enjoying being on the road? Because you always say whenever there's a road game coming up, you, you actually prefer that. Have you seen that the team is more like that, or is that something you guys really discuss with them? No, we haven't at all. Um, but, you know, they are more uh, engaged with one another when we're on the road. Like, dinners are – a little raucous, like, you know, they're loud. There's been a couple of times in restaurants where we've had to tell them to tone it down. You know, um, pregame meals on the road are a lot different vibe than the pregame meals here. It's just less distraction. You know, it's just less of a distraction to me. And when you're, you know, when you have a team that um, we have leadership, but we don't have, like, Jada's a leader, but she's not vocal. You know, she's not vocal. Um, so when you don't have that strong presence, um, you know, uh, it's, it's not as, as of a mature group, I, I guess I should say that I could say that. So, uh, you know, you are prone to more outside distractions when you're at home. So whether they like it or not, I think we're better on the road. I think we're more locked in on the road. Now with Oklahoma coming up on Saturday, you mentioned the other day, it's, it's almost, it's very similar to TCU. You said they were they were two of the teams, including yourself, that's actually gotten better throughout the year, and they're on that that bubble trying to get in the tournament tournament and everything. Is that is it kind of the same? Um, are you going to that game the same way you did TCU? As far as this team's hot, they have something to really play for. The pressure's on them, like you like you said for TCU. Yes, it, except I never told the team that about TCU. Um, because I really try to keep the focus on us in, in terms of my communication with the team. Um, like, we don't even we, – we do personnel. We do personnel. I've got a scouting report right here. I just came from a staff meeting. We do personnel. We show them personnel. We show them clips, all that, absolutely, because they, they need to be prepared. But on game day, when I stand there in front of the team, I write each of their names up on the board. And we talk about each of them and what they're going to bring today. Um, you know, because that falls into the control, the controllables piece. Um, so I know that OU was playing with a sense of urgency just like TCU did. I know that Oklahoma can't afford to lose to us just like I knew that TCU did. But I don't want to discuss that with a team because they don't need any sort of pressure like that. So I guess with us, then, what have you really see seen from Oklahoma from really the last time you played them and just now, you know, getting near the end of the year? Uh, the number one thing is they're shooting the ball better. 
much better. Uh, number two is they're executing better. Um, Sherry Cole is uh, one of the great motion offense minds in the country. Um, and so they, I watched Oklahoma early, early this year because they played University of Florida, um, you know, a team that obviously I just coached last year, and they played New Mexico. One of my buddies um, is an assistant coach at New Mexico, so I wanted to watch them. So I watched those two games, and, um, you know, Florida, they lost, you know, at, at Oklahoma. And they just didn't look like a Sherry Cole team. They looked really disjointed. And now I watch them and they're flowing. I mean, they are flowing. They're passing and cutting and setting screens and shooting the ball with confidence. And VPL is, you know, their post player. She's, you know, a big presence inside. And their point guard, their freshman point guard, Pellington, um, she's playing with a great deal of confidence as well. So it's just a different OU team than the first time we played them. So I guess with that being said, with the with the biggest problem, I guess, being getting those guards and like the shooting – since they're shooting better, is that going to be one of the main things you kind of focus on to stop them? Yeah. So one of our main defensive keys is uh, knowing KYP, know your personnel, know who the shooters are, know who we've got to go over the ball screens or under the ball screens, know who the drivers are. No, you can't pinch off shooters on ball side no matter what. Um, you know, so we're, we don't double team because I love our post players. I feel like we, we don't have to double team. We've never double teamed all year. Um, and so there's no excuse to leave shooters open, and we did that a lot the first time, but they missed a lot of shots because they, they weren't shooting the ball as well. They won't, do that. they won't do that tomorrow. So our number one key defensively is know your personnel. Um, we have to defend the three, uh, transition defense. Uh, Gabby Ortiz does in Pellington. They do as good a job as anyone in the league of pushing it in transition and going until they're stopped.